Alright, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how is everybody doing? I hope you're having a fantastic time. Kasumi is finally released onto the uh, live servers, and some people are actually upset, saying that she's actually super powerful. And I've came to the conclusion that that's not actually true. She does, yes, have a big cone to her main weapon, which should definitely be nerfed. In fact, I think that the size of the... Um, of the cone should be as big as, for example, when you're playing with a, the circle reticle. You know, when it opens up, that should be the maximum so that, you know, it's not that forgiving. I feel like it's super easy to hit people even if they're not straight in the middle of the screen. And that definitely is an issue. Hopefully they're going to change that. Also, I already gave some feedback to her movement ability as, for example, to allow us to left click you use your primary fire if you're on console obviously it will be the triggers and everything but if you use your main fire while you're doing the movement ability if you're at the middle it will teleport your body to that place where you are and cancel the movement ability immediately if you use the ability again it will teleport you back to the body and if you don't do anything you'll just go all the way till the end and then teleport the body to you uh once the time of the ability is over now however um New players are still struggling on how to deal uh, some damage with her and actually how to fight. She's amazing to do uh, 1v1s, so TDMs is definitely her beach. If you guys want to uh, go to TDM and learn a little bit of the mechanics and have to f learn how to fight, then not just that, but on TDMs you don't have a lot of tanks or a lot of deployables, so it's a lot easier to actually focus on what you're doing because her main flaw is shields and deployables in fact i gave a suggestion to a passive that she could definitely have which is a hundred percent extra damage to shields and deployables now you're probably thinking oh my god that's a lot N no it's not she does 200 damage on her main weapon she does more damage per stack so like 50 extra damage per stack but she cannot play stacks on shields and the talent for example that i'm using the most is the first one that gives you speed of attack and also movement speed per stack out there right um, if you use your ultimate, you become a machine gun. You'll see that when you go into the game. But the thing is, even without this talent, you cannot apply stacks to shields or deployables. So you cannot really do damage to any of those. Because 200 damage on a shield at like 10,000 HP, it's definitely bad for you. Alright, and especially because, especially now on Siege, there's a lot of C the Aegis, Fernandos, Barracks, and whatnot... And once this champion reaches competitive, it's going to be super weak because of it. Any sort of a normal, you know, normal team comp that takes a point tank of a Barrack, of maybe an Anara, or even a Fernando, will definitely just make her absolutely trash. And the only way that she can do anything is by going after the squishies. But even then, she still needs to have somebody by her side most of the times because of her movement ability is not an escape. Her movement ability is actually more like a mind game kind of thing. You can use it to trick somebody. You can use it to uh, go in to get close to somebody to start applying stacks. And obviously, the first talent will give you some movement speed, so you can try. You know, you can you can strafe a little bit, which is amazing. So, first of all, just since we're already here, best items for her: nimble, because I'm I'm probably gonna forget this eventually, so I'm gonna say this right now. But nimble, the first one of the best items that she can have uh the one that gives you speed on eliminations is okay but definitely she requires something else for example any sort of uh, invisible targets sky strix um seven sati shalin you're definitely gonna need eliminate a hundred percent why this is one of the champions that requires this the most if you do not have a target you cannot shoot you cannot do anything. The only thing you can do is do your movement ability and your dolls, your traps. Other than that, even the ultimate won't work. So you're definitely going to need Eliminate. A seven latches onto the wall, get close enough to see him and have max Eliminate and boom. This is the only way you have to fight them. Now, you can also go for Haven, Veteran and put the card to extra HP and make her a bit more tanky so you can go and actually survive long enough to reach the five stacks. Um, so, but the, the reality is that you cannot fight invisible targets unless you have Illuminate. And Resilience comes in clutch as well when it comes to a lot of the CCs because you, 
like I said, your movement ability is not really a escape, so you want to make sure you never get stunned or slowed or trapped, cri uh, crippled or anything of the sort. So resilience, if there's any sort of CC that will stop you, um, eliminate any sort of invisible targets, please, for the love of God, buy it. Trust me, you're going to love it. Nimble is good. If you don't have to buy, like, Eliminate or Resilience, you can always go straight away for Haven and Veteran. Also, just in case you don't understand, one of the reasons why I'm saying Nimble, it is because this character doesn't have necessary verticality or anything of the sort. So you're going to have to move around, you know, just walking a lot. And in order to close in your distance to the enemies, because you don't have an insane range to attack, you want to make sure you move fast enough, okay? Um... I'm gonna go go into shooting range. I'm not gonna put any gameplay because I will still grab some gameplays and put it up uh, as soon as I have some good stuff. I already have some good games. I can even show you my history uh, and show you that she's definitely good in the right hands. But I want to show you just what items you should buy. So nimble, 100%. Because like while this walking speed is pretty good, look at the distance that I have to walk to get close to an enemy to start doing damage, right? So, that's not good at all. Having Nimble allows me to move way faster. And close in on the gap between me and the enemy. Way, way, way more. Funny enough, that was a bug. It's, there's a little bug here. That's interesting. I can't shoot the... I cannot shoot the Ying until I pass... This? That's interesting. That's a shooting range bug. But obviously, Nimble is going to come in clutch, allow you to close in the distance way faster. And then with the five stacks, you can just start moving even faster. You can see how fast I'm going already, and that is amazing. Now, if you want to go for Lethality, then sure, but there's going to there's gonna be items that are already good. Now, Kronos, I do not recommend because the once you use the, the traps, for example, once you use one of them, that's it. You're going to have to go on a cooldown. So that's not really interesting. And people are going to get resilience for the traps, so really don't bother. If it is for you, right-click. There's even a card that reduces the cooldown of it. And even then, I still don't recommend it 100%. Like, for example, I can show you here the loadout. And you can see I don't have any sort of cooldown reduction on it. But it's always good because my loadout actually consists of getting stacks fast. And I go with the one that gives me three stacks as soon as I hit a right-click. And this will happen every 10 seconds. Now, if you didn't notice yet, the cooldown of the right click is pretty much 10 seconds. <laughs> so, eventually, you're always going to be able to take advantage of this. And if you get Cronus, you're going to have your right click way too soon. And then you're going to mess up and not use that card correctly. So, it's actually also there to help you. Now, many people are going to be like, oh, but Creepers, why are you using your right click before you have the five stacks? Listen, the time that it takes for me to get the five stacks... First of all, on a squishy, your AC, like, I, I right-click and it's dead, right? Now look at this. You saw the difference in speed? Now, you don't have to do it immediately with that. You can do, like, two attacks and then go with the with the right-click, get some extra damage, and you can just kill them pretty fast. But what I'm saying is that I use the right-click actually to apply marks, right? So I go like this, That's five and it's in a dead, row. right? super super fast and it's pretty good this is for this talent obviously if you haven't tried the other two talents unfinished business honestly it's just for me it's a, a death sentence and spirit bombs is all pretty good but it only it does that right like i have this loadout here that somebody suggested to me it's actually okay um you can try it yourself if you didn't notice yet you can place the the, the dolls at long range with this talent only with this talent okay and then you can just do this It'll trigger, do damage, cure them straight away, put them stacks on, and so on. But like I said, with the other talent, it allows you to duel people way easier. So anybody who's alone, or anybody who's a bit more placed to the side, you can just punish them straight away. Notice how I also started there with two, two stacks. That's also part of the loadout, if you pay attention. I have this one here as a passive. Now, the reason why I don't want this inside of my loadout, it is because it's super inconsistent. With this card, I can control it when I want to, right? And I can just get that extra DPS. Left click, right click, left click, and that's it. But if I go with this one at five points, it will post also like 10 seconds and you'll have like three, an, an extra stack. 
right? But that's it. I believe that's it. Let me just check. Yeah, like you put an extra stack every 10 seconds. It's not really worth it. All right, so go for this. The speed after the um, movement ability is in case you finish the movement ability, you can just run away or stack with Nimble. Obviously, Dimension Returns, be careful. And then um, the rest of the cards here, as you can see, max HP. Why? Because if I go with Veteran, that puts me at a whopping 2,737 HP. If I then go with Haven, that makes me super tanky. Not just that, but all of this stacks on top of your movement ability, making your movement ability actually finally work. So, you see how much damage I can take. Not just that, but even worse than that. Even worse than that. If you did a new, your stacks actually make the damage of somebody way lower, right? So, if somebody like this Cassie were to be affected by this, they can't do almost any damage to me for that little tiny duration. So it's like you're playing Ray, but as a auto-aim character or whatever you want to call it. Also, by the way, I still don't agree with the term auto-aim. Because this is, as you can see here, it is super forgiving and really they need to reduce this. But this is like an invisible hit scan. The only thing they're missing is like the uh, little shots from your weapon to be traveling towards the enemy to see them but other than that yeah it doesn't it doesn't really make a lot of sense to call this out of way boon when it doesn't really work like that um also another little thing if you have too many targets in front of you to deal with uh don't actually worry about it because because you have this and you applied so many stacks the moment you start switching targets you see that you'll always have the movement speed because there's there's stacks out there. You don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about having to apply a lot of stacks every once in a while. The other the other card that I said, the little passive one that gives you one extra one extra stack by just you know you just attack and it gives you an extra stack. I don't know when it should be ready. Let me see. There it is. You see there are two stacks. Oh wait, no, it stole it from this one, I think. Let me see, let me see. No, right now it's not triggering, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's this card here. Uh, this one here. Sealed Fate, it's there. It's like, it acts a little bit like Life Rip, honestly. You don't have to use it. And Life Rip it is good, but it's only good at early game. So that you can actually... If you stack it with the thing that I was saying, you can see here how much HP I'm getting back here per shot. But it's not really worth it at late game, especially because Cauterize is gonna hit. In fact, Kill to Heal is gonna be better. And now finally, one extra beautiful tip that I've been actually saying the entire day on stream. So as you saw, I was talking about how you can place marks with your right click uh, with that card that I showed you. What if I told you that there's one combo that it requires you to do the opposite? This one actually requires you to wait for your right click, which is the ultimate. When you apply the ultimate, they get five stacks. And then you apply another 900 on top and you can see there that's a ton of damage. You don't even need to left click on and most champions. You'll just right click as soon as you see the five stacks and that's it. Right? You do this. Guess what? Five stacks. Boom. He's dead. No need to worry about it. And for tanks, that's even... That's that's very, very strong, but still doesn't kill them. As I'm going to show you here. So what you can do is do this. Hide for a second. And just left click. The speed because of the talent makes it super strong. So, as you can see here, here's, here's some of the tips and tricks. Her items are going to be super important for her. Eliminate resilience. Seriously, if you have to give more attention to eliminate and resilience to make sure that you're fighting maybe a Shaolin, and a Strix or anything of the sort, you want to have the opportunity to shoot them as soon as they're close to you. Instead of Veteran, for example, just go for it. Okay, yes, you can take some extra hits with Veteran, but sometimes seeing the Strix before he shoots you is way more important than actually having to tank another shot, okay? Especially now that everybody's gonna be spamming through casuals with the new recent talent for Strix, so... There you go. Um, 
couple of tips that are just very general. It will work for any champion. Go for squishy champions first, obviously. So supports, DPS, and flanks. Leave the tanks for last. Uh, if you have an ultimate, try to apply the ultimate to the tank. Uh, usually they also tend to stay together with other people, like supports and so on. So it will always be a guaranteed 2-3 hit uh, with the ultimate because of the daggers flying around. Um, try to use the corners to your advantage in the map because your movement ability is so bad. You always want to use the map itself to help you, right? If you have to immediately hide, then do it. To use your movement ability, I also recommend, like, imagine that the enemy is right there. First go over the corner and then use the movement ability so that you have that extra second to force the enemy to move in to see your body to use it but also be careful also be careful one thing uh, Yagrath can ult your body Drogos can ult your body Zen can ult your body Talos can ult your body Makoa can pull you with his hook you will be CC'd on your body your body is not CC immune when you do this ab ability okay so yeah. Alright, but again, if you want to try Spirit Bombs and you have some sort of a good loadout, feel free to share it down in the comments below. Why not? If you really want the most common and, right now, the easiest one for anybody to start learning her mechanics, Empowered Curse, go with a loadout like this. You don't have to be exactly like this. Uh, you can put some heals on the movement ability, but remember, you're being cauterized because your body is being hit. Right? So, that card will be affected. So, unless you want to take the third talent to try to be uncauterizable, then, yeah, this is going to be your best bet. Stick together to your team, always. Your, the, K Kasumi is super easy to defeat, to destroy, so you always want to make sure you have a teammate next to you. But a loadout, again, is this one. Feel free to copy it. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just make sure you use the right items at all times. Make sure you focus the squishies first. Use the environment to your aid. Learn how to use the ability, especially the movement ability, after corners or something. Alright, imagine you're fighting a sniper and you can stay behind a box. Use the movement ability right there and then back out into cover. Uh, use the ultimate on, on tanks. Wait for the ultimate to give the five stacks on the enemies and only then do the right click. Oh, also a little thing, in case you didn't notice. Um... I'm gonna show you here. That just literally happened there, but I want to show you. You apply five stacks to everyone with your ultimate. But if you start shooting somebody else, it will strip, as you see there, it will strip those stacks from those people. So, first, right click the person who has the ultimate so he takes the that extra damage, and only then you start going with left click to somebody else. Okay? So, there you go. That's pretty much it. I hope. I can see some good Kasumis or Kunamis in the future. And if you want to take just a quick little look into my history match so you understand that I actually am playing this champion a lot and not just saying stuff out of my ass or something, right? Here you go. 22 kills, 12, 13, 11, 13, 12, 16, 14, 13, 18, 21, 15, 16. As you can see, I've been playing her a lot. I've been winning more than I've been losing. It started here basically today. And she's definitely powerful. She needs that cone size reduced ASAP. So thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any loadout suggestions or extra any, a little extra tips that maybe sometimes I might actually um, not be aware of, then feel free to go down in the comments below. One final little tip before I go away. A good place to put a doll in case you're playing Siege. Point. If your tank is there and you need to fear the enemies so that they can stay away from the point, guess what? It works. Then just straight away use your movement ability and back out to your team. It's right, really, really good. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.